Hi, Zach Dobson here with another Friday photo tip. This week is the second part in my series about one of my specialties, shooting in low light without flash. After this tip, check the link in my bio to download a free low light shooting guide with additional tips and editing techniques. This week I focus on techniques and best practices. Last week I discussed camera settings. You can watch them in either order. First I'm going to talk about stabilizing your camera. As you get into very low light, since you're working at low shutter speeds, to achieve focused images, you need additional stabilization. Tripods are the obvious answer, but personally, I don't like how much they slow me down, so I almost never use them. Tripods do work well for things like landscapes and architecture, though. I try to do things like wedge myself or my camera against a door frame, tree, furniture, etc. I might set it flat on the ground or a stable surface, Shooting in bursts is another technique that I frequently use. Most cameras have a burst mode that allow you to hold down the shutter release, that's the picture taking button, and take a quick series of photos. Set the camera to your fastest burst mode and fire off three to five shots for each image. That will greatly increase the likelihood of getting a good photo. Shoot your widest angle lens. Wide angle lenses typically have a lower minimum aperture than medium to telephoto lenses. Also, a wider angle lens lets you shoot at lower shutter speeds before hand motion causes blur. For example, with a 35mm lens, you should be fine shooting at 1 15th of a second without handshake appearing. If you're using a 200mm lens trying to shoot at 1 15th of a second, it's going to be crazy blurry. If you're shooting with a single dim light source, your light meter can try to trick you because it's trying to find the average reading of a scene that's very dark. There are two ways to compensate for this. First, the easiest one is to use a preview mode on your camera's LCD. If you're using a traditional DSLR, when you look through the viewfinder, you're looking through the lens. But when you're looking at live view on the LCD, you're looking at what the sensor sees, so you're getting a preview of the final image. You can use that to guide your camera settings while shooting. With a mirrorless camera, even the viewfinder is an LCD screen, so it's giving you a live view of the final image. The second more traditional metering option for low light is to set your camera to a spot metering mode and use that to meter off the primary point of focus in the image. So, say someone is holding a candle, you can spot meter on their face to get your best reading. Another technique I use is to underexpose images. When using the light meter, Typically, you're trying to get it right in the center for your best exposure. However, underexposure in low light settings is often beneficial. For example, if at your light meter's proper exposure, your shutter speed is one tenth of a second, that's pretty slow. If you underexpose by one stop, or moving towards the negative one on your camera's light meter, you'll be at one twentieth of a second, which gives you a lot better chance of a steady photo. You could even push it further and shoot at one thirtieth or so. Just know that the more you underexpose, the shadows lose more detail. And if you need to brighten up the image when you're editing, you can start to get what's called noise or pixelation in your images. So get out this weekend and try shooting in some situations where you normally think this is way too dark. Use hashtag ZDP photo challenge and I'll check out your photos and share them in my stories. Leave comments here if you need some more info. And don't forget to check the link in my bio to download my low light photography guide. Thanks and keep it real.